life is conceived and nurtured by the ocean. The blood which circulates in the body resembles the composition of sea water. Sodium, potassium, calcium and other minerals are dissolved in it and regulate the body's internal environment. Various types of cells utilize them to perform their life-maintaining activities. Here in the vein, carbonic acid and the waste products of energy conversion are drained away by the bloodstream. Inside the blood vessels, beside red blood cells, we also find platelets and white blood cells, which help to stop bleeding from an injured blood vessel or defend the organism from the invading bacteria. Here we see leukocytes, which are normally spherical in the bloodstream, changing shape and squeezing through the vascular wall into the surrounding tissue. When inflammation or any other abnormal event develops, leukocytes are vigorously recruited and flood to the site of host defense. It is the artery which supplies nutrients and oxygen to the front line where life process takes place. Perhaps due to smooth muscle contraction, the artery is now narrowing. A cross-section of the atherosclerotic artery showing inside the vessel wall the raised lesions which have been stained red. Though the artery is a strong and elastic tissue, since it has to bear the pressure of blood pumped from the heart, some abnormality may develop over the years. Let us close in on the sclerotic lesion. Inside the lesion, macrophage-like cells are moving about. Cells storing cholesterol ester granules are surfacing out of the lesion. The macrophages and smooth muscle cells of the arterial wall which have ingested lipids and store them, are called foam cells. As the lesion in the arterial wall progresses, it will reduce the diameter of the arterial lumen and its elasticity, and will eventually induce complications such as angina pectoris or myocardial infarction. This film will focus on the arterial wall cells involved in the sclerotic change and study their behavior and interaction with calcium. These smooth muscle cells have been isolated from the artery. By their contraction and relaxation, they regulate blood pressure. Let's look at the calcium ions stored in the smooth muscle cells. Using a fluorescent probe, we can see the intracellular calcium ions. The yellow or red areas indicate the high concentration of calcium ions 
in the cytoplasm. It seems that intracellular calcium ion concentration is tightly regulated in some way. Does the smooth muscle cell autonomously modulate calcium ion concentration? The calcium ion plays an important role in the regulation of cellular function and is stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The bright network in the cytoplasm is a sarcoplasmic reticulum. The intracellular calcium ion is either stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, stained here by cyanin dye, or is released into the cytoplasm. The calcium ions are released into the cytoplasm when needed, and this enhances the contraction and motility of the cell. Let us shed a different light on the cell. These are smooth muscle cells viewed through a differential interference contrast microscope. With high sensitivity polarization, the intracellular structure is now coming into view. Against the dim background, a thin glow of fibrous patterns appears. Are these the myofilaments known to be involved in contraction and migration of smooth muscle cells. Increased concentration of intracellular calcium ions activates myofilaments and this causes the contraction of smooth muscle cells. Along with the movement of the cell, a change also occurs in the filaments. Let's see how the smooth muscle cell contracts in response to endothelin, the vasoconstrictor produced by the endothelial cells. The smooth muscle cell started to shrink. This can be explained by the activation of the contractile proteins such as actin and myosin by the increased concentration of intracellular calcium ion. Now let us treat smooth muscle cells with endothelin and watch the behavior of calcium ions. In one or two minutes, Calcium ions build up in the cell as indicated by expansion of the red and yellow areas. It seems that the increase of intracellular calcium ions by the exposure to endothelin has triggered the contraction of the cell. We want to examine more closely the link between cellular motility and calcium ions. These smooth muscle cells have been cultured on a filter of five micron pore size. Let's introduce the smooth muscle cell chemotactic factor on the other side of the filter and observe how the cells react. This alarm signal of an abnormal event occurring elsewhere in the body 
is trying to drive these cells to move. What information do the cells now receive from the flux of calcium ions? In time, they shrink in size and squeeze themselves through the pores in the filter. Let's focus now on the other side of the filter. Having managed to migrate through the filter, the cells expand their membranes and pulsate. Now, Let's see how they react to the addition of the calcium antagonist. The smooth muscle cells remain spherical and motionless. Although not indifferent to the call of the chemotactic factors, the cells are paralyzed by the calcium antagonist, which blocks the calcium channel. They can no longer penetrate the filter. The calcium ion is linked intimately to the motility of the smooth muscle cell. In response to stimulation by the chemotactic factor, the smooth muscle cells leave the tunica media and migrate towards the intima. The cells have abandoned their role of controlling vascular contractility and assumed a different character. A curious thing happens. The cells after migrating from the tunica media to the intima, change their character. Now they vigorously divide and proliferate, and the vascular lumen size decreases, along with the progress of atherosclerosis. On the other hand, the smooth muscle cells which have migrated to the intima, eagerly ingest LDL and other lipoproteins and become foam cells. Let's look at the smooth muscle cells cultured in an LDL-rich medium. With increased incorporation of LDL, small black granules become more and more abundant in the cell. These granules later on become liquid crystals of cholesterol esters. This foam cell is packed with cholesterol esters. The polarization filter shows up the bright cruciform cholesterol esters in the cell. Thus, the smooth muscle cells which migrated into the intima are now transformed into foam cells. Macrophages were made to ingest a denatured LDL. Again, in macrophages, the liquid crystals of cholesterol esters are observed. In the sclerotic lesion, foam cells packed with bright cholesterol esters are congregating. In this manner, more and more cholesterol esters accumulate in the sclerotic lesion. Is it the proliferation of the smooth muscle cells having migrated to the intima which narrows the vascular lumen? The homeostasis of the organism is now disturbed. So far, 
we have seen the essential role played by the calcium ion in the regulation of vital cell functions such as replication or motility. If the calcium antagonist acts to restrain the migration of smooth muscle cells, it may offer an important means to limit the progress of atherosclerosis. Intensive research efforts are probing the functions of calcium ions and seeking clues to the harmony of the processes of life.